Okay, it is October 13th, Saturday, and I want to talk about something important. Uh, this story, you see the headline here, Evangelical Leaders Try to Get Out Christian Conservative Vote Despite Objections to Mormonism. Uh, is consistent with what's been going on for a long time in the evangelical movement in the United States, namely uh, evangelical pastors, uh, evangelical leaders, uh, often uh, push for candidates in major, you know, especially in the major elections like presidential elections. Okay, uh, and without necessarily doing it explicitly from the pulpit, uh, certainly they put pressure on people uh, to vote one way or the other. Uh, most, of course, are usually uh, Republicans, uh, and there are uh, surprisingly is the way the media portrays it, uh, even some that are uh, Democrats and, uh, you know, stump for the Democratic candidate. Now, I want to read a little bit of this story and use it uh, as a, yeah, well, you'll see. Okay. Evangel evangelical leaders worried that Mitt Romney's Mormonism could suppress conservative turnout on election day are intensifying appeals for Christians to vote knowing that most will vote for Romney, I suppose. In poll after poll, evangelicals have overwhelmingly said they would back the Republican presidential nominee despite theological differences with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's the Mormon church. Uh, but what had been thought of as a hypothetical question for American evangelicals for years, Southern Baptist leader Al Mohler said recently is now a reality with this election and is being tested in a contest that will likely be decided by slim margins. The fact is that Mitt Romney is a Mormon and many of our people are very, very uncomfortable about voting for a Mormon, as I am. I supported somebody else in the primary, but hey, we have no option, said Steve Strang. We have no option. That is absurd. Okay? And this Strong or Strang, whatever his name is, uh, he's a liar, and so is Al Mohler. Uh, okay, uh, and Strong especially is a liar. Look, the Mormons are good, God-fearing people in their own way. Well, we know where he's headed. The uh, but but the point here is that it's it, it's absurd uh, that you have no options. And and Billy Graham, of course, uh, you know, the Pope of Protestantism, I suppose. He also is now, you know, kind of emphasize him and his son Franklin, I, I guess. It says they're going to uh, work on turning out evangelical Christians for the Republican, for, for Romney. Listen, I, I've been given this line before when people have been trying to, when evangelicals have tried to tell me I should be voting. You know, you, you can't complain if you don't vote for the, uh, this or that candidate. The mess we're in as Americans is not a mess we're in because one political party or candidate is worse than the other. The mess we're in as Americans is not a mess we're in because people stayed home on election day rather than voting for McCain or Kerry or Gore or Dole or any other losing presidential candidate. The explanation of this mess goes a lot deeper than which of these political parties or candidates wins an election. Think about it. You, you don't like the communist pro-abortion president ruling the country right now, so you're going to vote for Romney. But how did that work you know, two, in 2000 uh, when you, if you're an evangelical uh, who voted for Bush, when you voted for Bush rather than Gore? Abortion wasn't outlawed. Government didn't shrink. In fact, it's the opposite. Abortion remained legal, uh, and government entitlements were expanded, and government itself grew. Uh, the Patriot Act was signed, and we were robbed of more freedoms than most of us knew we had. Bush set and Bush set the precedent that Obama has followed in taking away some of our most fundamental rights. This is especially apparent uh, in his signing into law of the National Defense Authorization Act a law that allows the federal government to indefinitely detain U.S. citizens without charge or trial. You know, if you're not familiar with that, go ahead and look it up. 
it doesn't it's not it's not pretty you know it doesn't sound good bush didn't come to the rescue in fact bush set the precedent that you'll be able to cite speaking primarily to evangelicals here when you are hauled off to the re-education camps without charge or trial it wasn't a great thing to vote for it didn't save you from problems okay it wasn't the solution to the mess we're in evangelicals need to get their hands heads out of the sand okay you need to open your eyes romney won't make a difference he won't save the unborn he won't roll back the communist socialist or fascist legislation that's now in place and he won't stop the wretched murderous godless wars that the u.s uh, along with nato continue to fight uh, for the purpose of achieving the, the really diabolical aims of the occultist bankers and, and corporate leaders uh, who seized control of this country, especially the bankers, who seized control in the early 20th century when Wilson handed the country, Woodrow, President Woodrow Wilson handed the country over to the Fed. Again, you can look this up, okay? And you don't get to vote for the guy who is currently printing the dollar and your bank accounts out of existence. I'm thinking Bernanke uh, or whoever the uh, uh, chair of the Fed will be um, in the future if there's changes. But even this isn't all there is to the story. The Fed is, is sure, accounts for some of why, you know, why we're in the mess we're in. But the Fed would never have stood a chance of taking control of this country if the country hadn't established itself as a secular state uh, where godlessness was the cultural norm. And it had been the norm from the beginning. Okay, uh, You can focus on the, the little pockets of religious uh, people, the, the Christians and Puritans and Pilgrims who came over. But from the earliest days, uh, this country has been marked by violence and oppression and, and evil. Okay, from from colonists showing up using smallpox invested invested uh, blankets to kill Indians, uh, through treating human beings as chattel, okay, to repudiating Christ and Christianity in the Treaty of Tripoli in 1796 and 97, and many other wicked things. And that's just that's scratching the surface. Okay, the current system under uh, you are under in the United States is the judgment of God. And, and you got to think of it like this. You don't want to acknowledge Christ? You want to deny Christ in your treaties? You want to establish wickedness and oppression, the very things Scripture repeatedly condemns? You want to launch unjustified wars? You don't want to follow Christ's law of love and truth to rule over you? Fine, God says. Have it your way. You can be ruled by some people who really hate me. And this is what you get. Godless murderous bankers ruling over you, lying to you, and begging you to remain a part of this wretched political system by voting. When you vote, you provide cover for the elite globalists. You comfort the liars. They want Americans to feel free even when every freedom you had has been taken from you. And evangelicals and voters everywhere are willing to play along by voting. And Graham and Mueller and the Stang guy, these Stang, Stang, whatever, these people are urging you to do this. They want you to perpetuate the lie. They want you to be deceived. Now, maybe because they're deceived themselves and they actually believe this, or maybe because they're just uh, very evil people. Hopefully, it's just that they're deceived, which is evil in itself. But here's what you should do instead of playing along. Maybe if you're really bold, you can take your Bible to polling booths or you know outside the polling center or not polling, uh, voting uh, uh, centers, right? Uh, go up there and call for Americans to repent and expose the evil that has really taken over. Or if you're not that kind of person, you're not you know, going to be that outspoken, at least stay home and tell your family to do the same. But don't participate in the wickedness. Don't die as aiders and abettors of these occultist, satanic forces that rule the United States of America. 
Romney is a lie. Obama is a lie. They aren't just liars. They're a lie. And the biggest liars of all are the global elites who feed these candidates to you in order to give you the illusion that you live in a free country. If you vote, you accept the lie and you're guilty of perpetuating it, okay? You can't continue to be a part of this system and expect change to happen, okay? Uh, there's an old saying, an old quote, I, I can't remember who it was from. It's, something tells me I, it was uh, Rousseau, but I, I can't remember. I may be totally wrong about that. But it, it's, it goes something like this. You can't change the system from within. The system is within. Okay? And the point here is if you try to change the system from within, especially when it's deeply flawed like this, so deeply flawed, uh, that, the, that when you go in and try to change the system from within, you become a part of it and you perpetuate it. You're actually the problem. By stepping out, opposing the system, uh, uh, speaking out against it, not voting, it loses its credibility. The lie does. The winning candidate has less of a mandate. You know, uh, eventually, the system would have to be uh, restarted okay, and, and begun again. And that's what that's what really needs to happen. Uh, if you go vote, you know, you can think things will be different, but but they won't be. Okay, uh, this country is in trouble because it's a covenant-breaking country. Really, it's a Sabbath-profaning country. It's a it's a country that loves and believes lies, and it's a covenant-breaking country. Uh, the Solomon Covenant. Uh, uh, it's very case is very compelling that the Sondland Covenant binds the United States of America. Uh, you should look this up if you haven't. But one of the things that you're supposed to do if you're fulfilling this covenant obligation is with all faithfulness, endeavor the discovery, exposing, that is, of all such persons as have been or shall be incendiaries, malignants, or evil instruments by hindering the reformation of religion, dividing the king or the government from the people, or one of the kingdoms from another, bound by the covenant, or making any faction or parties among the people contrary to this leading covenant, that they may be brought to public trial and receive condign punishment, as the degree of their offenses shall require or deserve or the supreme judicatories of both kingdoms, respectively, or others having power from them for that effect shall judge convenient and so on. But the point here is, the wicked leaders of this country who like to be hidden need to be exposed and eventually uh, by the appropriate people in authority need to be punished now when you vote and you play along they don't get in trouble they get to stay in in secret and in hiding and that's that's appalling and you do not want to contribute to that scripture is very explicit uh, uh, that that uh, if you approve their sins, you're going to be suffering the punishment for them. Okay? So, that's all I have to say. Take care.